Hey guys and girls, my name's Alan and today's episode of Trailer Analysis we'll be looking at the recently released Battlefield 1 trailer which if you didn't know is the new Battlefield title releasing later this year. Now, last week I did, a, well, the week before I did a trailer analysis for the new Call of Duty game uh, Infinite Warfare and this trailer from, from EA uh, for Battlefield is pretty much a polar opposite of what that trailer was. So whereas Infinite Warfare focuses on sci-fi and the future uh, EA and DICE have decided to return to history and do a, a scenario that's never really been done before in gaming and they've decided to do World War One. so yeah um, without further ado let's get started oh, uh, just to note the trailer is playing at 50% speed because there's quite a lot going on um, and if it's played at normal speed it's very easy to miss so yeah let's get started They have like an exclusive deal with Microsoft. Bit of a shame, but all right. Okay, so opening scene straight away. No messing about. Guy gets smashed in the face with a with a mini bat with spikes on it. There is a name for this weapon, but I can't remember what it's called. I think it's a some sort of club or something. But point is, a uh, soldier just gets his face wrecked. And also, the uh, soldier in the background who's wielding the club is wearing a gas mask. Now, World War One. There wasn't a lot of rules in terms of fighting. Um, a lot of the rules are actually introduced after World War One uh, in various treaties and, and agreements and stuff like that. So um, there was pretty much, as I said, not a lot of restrictions in terms of war. I mean, this was this was new. This was new for the world uh, to be involved in such a massive engagement. And so chemical weapons and stuff like that weren't they weren't banned but because they were never really used before. And that's why both countries, all countries use these sort of weapons, uh, Britain and uh, a lot of the other European countries as well. So it's, um, it's, it definitely was a different time back then. Uh, it's not as clean cut as it is now. Uh, something to note in the background, there's some little um, airships. Well, <laughs> they're little in the distance from here, but if you look at them up close, obviously they'll be quite big. And we'll get some better shots of those later in the trailer. And also, as you can see, the ground here is pretty much a wasteland. Um, it seems like the trees have been burnt down. The, the whole area has been shelled, as you can see by the uh, the broken tree stumps here and there. Oh, just take it back quickly. So as you can see, better look at the airship or blimp. It's not really a blimp; it's an airship. Uh, and then obviously there's flat going off in the background as well. Okay, so as you can see, it's clearly a desert environment. Um, when you think World War, you think uh, mainland Europe, you know, France, that sort of thing, Germany. Uh, but, uh, but obviously there was a lot of fighting going on in other parts of the world as well. So you've got Asia, you've got, in this place, I think it's North Africa that were fighting there as well. I know in World War II, the, the Nazis did try to take South North Africa. Uh, so as you can see, there's a rider on a horse uh, and he's holding a sword. So... Can we ride horses in this game? Um, can we use a sword in combat? Or is this just one of those enemy factions? Or maybe a friendly faction? I don't really know. Um, as I said, there's a lot of fighting going on in various places. And if I just get you a good picture, check out the face markings. Not markings. Uh, like tattoos. Not. There you go. That's a really good shot. Um, there's a, there's a that special ink that some countries use when they celebrate or whatever. Um, they they draw things on their on their hands and on the face and stuff. So it could be something to do with tribes and stuff. Anyway, moving on. So this is probably somewhere mainland Europe. Um, pictures not great quality. I um, I do apologise for that, but there's nothing too much I can do because of the frame rate of the video. Um, I mean, as as you can see. There's a gunner in the back of a plane. So he, this is the, the rear of the plane. This is the tail. And he's manning the the, the machine gun. And uh, I've heard that there is going to be vehicle combat in the game. Uh, and indeed in multiplayer as well. So instead of having, say, uh, a gunner in your, in your Apache helicopter, you've got a gunner in the back of your plane. And then you've got one in the background as well, but a different colour. So possibly a different faction. Um, a lot of people are throwing around the term... Uh, Red Baron, which uh, if you didn't know, he was a famous, uh, I think, German pilot. He shot down a lot of planes, and he obviously he flew one of those ones. Um, 
again another blimp and as you can see in the background it's hard to see but it looks like it's just wasteland no man's land you know, it's been shelled it's been bombed uh, and just obviously there's a lot of trenches down there which is where a lot of the fighting took place up close and personal facing off with each other a lot of stalemates and that's why the war dragged on for so long oh there you go oh, that's a really good there you go that's a that's quite a good picture right there and so as you can see, you've got fields on the left, but then you've got like a massive wasteland in the middle, and then either and then armies will be on either side of the trenches, and they'll just you know try to advance. And you know, progression in terms of taking land it, and back then, it was a case of like taking meters a day, and progressing you know like maybe a couple of hundred meters in any given month or, 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 or a week at most that sort of thing. So it was really slow, slow going, a lot of hard work. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, another blimp on the left and a plane flying uh, low from the, from the top. So, um, these airships here, um, I think they used them originally to like stop planes from flying low and like doing bombing runs and stuff like that or, you know, just strafe runs with machine guns. Um, so that's a deterrent. Uh, also to stop bombers uh, flying in at night time as well because obviously they couldn't see them so they couldn't avoid them. Uh, and so that would obviously hurt them. Pay attention to this guy here, um, and as you can see, there's there's quite a lot of there's there's barbed wire there, there's uh, sandbags here, so it's obviously this trench fighting, like literally trench fighting. All right, so the guy gets sparked out with a spade, and if you look center of the screen, I couldn't have picked a better screenshot to be honest. That is a shotgun, or back in the day, it was called a trench gun. So I believe, uh, if my history is correct, in that. Um, the, the shotgun was in fact invented for the purposes of fighting within the trenches hence why it was originally called the trench gun and uh, they needed a CQC based weapon that did a lot of damage but obviously could be used in tight corridors such as the trenches and they came up with the trench gun but now better known as the shotgun alright so again another picture of the, uh, the, the the focus on aerial combat uh, is quite obvious in this scene. Uh, there's a dogfight going on. You're manning one of the guns, and I assume your pilot is chasing this guy. Uh, and so this is I don't know. I'm really looking forward to trying this in multiplayer if they implement it. And they said they would, so I'd be interested to see how it goes. And as you can see, the scenery in the background, rocky mountains. So again, this probably fits in with the North Africa uh, scenario that I was talking about earlier. All right, so they crash into a building. It's kind of hard to say. I mean, it could be any sort of structure, but it could be an old, like medieval tower or something. See, now I'm not too sure about what this scene is. This one I know, obviously. Hold on, there we go. So I believe maybe some sort of marksman rifle uh, could be a sniper. The tank, obviously, you can't miss it. Now, the tank wasn't really introduced into the warfare until the end of World War One. Uh, it was one of the things that eventually broke the uh, the stalemate in in the in the trenches and uh, and won it for the for the Allied forces. But um, so yeah, uh, I believe I think this is the Mark or something, one of those sort of tanks, Mark something, Mark One, Mark Two, uh, possibly the Renault. The French did come up with their own towards the end of World War One, which they used in World War Two. But I think this might be the Mark One or the Mark Two. Um, and as you can see, you got the, the, the there'll be a gun on on that side, and then a big gun on the opposite side as well. And then there'll I think there's one on top, the main gun. Uh, it depends on the model of the tank, which I'm not too sure about. Um, but again, as you can see, it's a dusty environment, rocky. Again, it could be North Africa. And the first time I saw this, actually, the first thing that, f that f jumped into my mind was the Indiana Jones film, because obviously there's that scene where he was uh, chased by that tank. So again. Uh, emphasis on the horses here, playing in the background. You got this guy here. He looks like he could be, I don't know, like Arabic. He's got one of those, um, like not a headscarf, but like one of them things that that they wear to protect them from the sun because of the heat. Um, so this could be like somewhere in Arabia or something. I don't know in that sort of region. Okay, this bit. Um, 
obviously it's it's a nice building of some sort big windows big like corridors and doorways and stuff like that um so it could be in a inner city fighting but it's hard to say it could be like a nice big house somewhere out in the out in the woods you know like a big mansion a big villa uh, but then again that could be anywhere in the world so again it's hard to say uh, so front and centre, as you can see, there's, there's mustard gas going on. As I explained earlier, there wasn't a lot of um, restrictions in terms of warfare for World War One because, uh, as I said, they've never really experienced anything before, and both sides are trying to get a, a, an advantage over each other. So they were thinking up all these different weapons and, and stuff like that.